Marhaba friends, would you like to install Windows subsystem for Linux 2 on your Windows PC? Yes, it's easy. Let me guide you because I will show you things which you will not find elsewhere on the internet and hopefully on YouTube too. So my video becomes a hit. All right, without further ado, let's get started. You need Intel or AMD virtualization technology for you to be run, running WSL2. So get into your BIOS and turn it, turn it on. If you do not have it on, turn it on. And if you don't have virtualization in your BIOS, I would recommend updating your BIOS to the latest version, check with your manufacturer, and then go back into your BIOS, turn on Intel virtualization, turn on a virtualization technology, and follow the video, the remaining steps. If you don't have virtualization in your BIOS, it's not going to work. I found it out the hard way. <laughs> so I'm making it easy for you. All right, let's proceed. Check your Windows version. You need Windows May 2020 update. Or if you're in 1909, then you need to join the Insider program and update to the latest version of Windows through the Insider bits. And then you need, add, then you will be able to run it. Otherwise, no. <laughs> so please check your version with Windows uh, with WinWar. All right, next, we need to enable uh, two things in turn Windows features on or off. So go there and once it opens, let's browse down. Uh, let's just come down and find what we need to enable. You can do this step through the PowerShell also, but I'm making it easy for you, so GUI. Virtual machine platform, that's number one, and Windows subsystem for Linux. Click on OK once and then Windows will search for the required files. It, it, it will install it. And after installation, your PC will reboot. Windows subsystem for Linux 2 is way faster than WSL 1. With file IO, it is three to six times faster. Now you have 100% system call compatibility. The reason, the reason I will tell you in later on. So, okay, let's restart now. And okay, now what happened in WSL 1 was there was a translation layer. So when the, the Linux made a system call, it went down to the translation layer, which converted it into a Windows system call. And the Windows system call trans called into the uh, Windows NT kernel. And when the kernel responded, it came back to the translation layer. The translation layer handed over back to Linux. So it was slower. Now Microsoft has provided a VM to run. And that VM is written and maintained by Microsoft. It's all open source and the source code is on GitHub. That VM hosts an actual Linux kernel. That Linux is, that kernel is again written by Microsoft. So, so WSL is way faster. Okay, that's in a nutshell, guys. All right, now that it's started up, we will see what are the Linux distribution that we can install. So um, we have Fedora, Fedora Remix for WSL. So each, in, in your Windows store, you can search for any distribution. And once you find the distribution, just check whether it is for WSL or not. See, Fedora Remix for WSL is a remix of upstream Fedora Linux. Okay, let's search more. Uh, let's search for what, one more. Uh, I think we can find Open Suze. Open Suze, yeah, Open Suze Leap 15-1. Again, once this opens, you see again for Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, I think we'll search more again for what we have Debian. So all the major distributions, I think, uh, is are available for WSL. Okay, and uh, but what I'm interested in right now is I will install Ubuntu. So Ubuntu, we have 16.04, 18.04, and 20.04, which I don't know. Microsoft lined up to Ubuntu to name it to May 2020 update or win 2004 or ubuntu lined up to microsoft to say okay ubuntu 2004 but they both have 2004 in them that's i don't know i just noticed it i don't know i'm just saying it i, I hope i don't get into trouble for this okay so this is ubuntu 2004 you can read the description and there's one more caveat windows 10 s does not support running this app so if you have windows 10 s then you will not be able to run it. Otherwise, you're good to go. Um, that's it. Just see this. Okay. So 
So it requires at least Windows 10 build 16.237. That is why I showed you with my WinWare. Okay, so let's finally, and the size is 443.05 MB. And this is provided by Canonical and Ubuntu. So all these Linux distribution are provided by their own maintainers. While the VM that I talked about, which boots up really, really fast in the, that is the, that is why they, uh, they require that uh, hypervisor, right? So it's all, and at the end of the day, it's all running on a Windows hypervisor. So that is why they ask you to install the Windows uh, virtual machine platform and Windows subsystem for Linux. So you don't have to sign in as, as you notice. And once you click on the, in, in the get button, it will start downloading. So Ubuntu 20.04 is downloading. And once the download completes, we have to do one more step. Yes, now what I was talking about that the VM, the virtual machine, now it's a virtual machine based approach and not a translation based approach. So the hypervisor hosts the VM and the VM hosts the Linux kernel and the VM and the Linux kernel are both written by Microsoft and they are actual uh, ELF, ELF 64 bit binary that is executable and lit format stands for ELF if I am not wrong. And your user space bits, which is Ubuntu 20.04, those are provided by Canonical and the maintainers of the respective distribution. Yes. So we have to update the Linux kernel package update package. Okay. If I have pronounced it right. Okay. And I will provide the link in the description. Download it. It's a very small download, 13.6 MB. We'll go in a jiffy and we have to install it. We'll double click and install it. It's a MSI file. And our download has complete, so we will view downloads, and I'll push it to the desktop for me to for me to access it easier. So we hover over it. We will get the information. Why isn't it coming? Yeah, Windows installer package, Windows subsystem for Linux update. Okay, so double click on it, and it will install the uh, it will install this package. It will ask you for your permission. Click on yes, and it's done. Goes in a jiffy, right? Now comes the step we, where we find Ubuntu 24 LTS and click on it. Mind you, this Ubuntu 20.04 LTS is still installing in WSL1, Windows Subsystem for Linux 1. It's not yet in Windows Subsystem for Linux 2. We will have to convert this installation of Ubuntu from WSL1 to WSL2. Okay, so it's asking for a username. Uh, what username should I give? I just type in my name, which is Hikmate Ustad. Yeah, that sounds good. Hikmate Ustad, H-E-U, not H-E-Y, H -E -Y, but H-E-U. And once it accepts it, I uh, should, I don't know why it's taking this long, or maybe, my, okay, yeah. So it's asking me for a password. My password is again, what? I don't know, all right. My password has been updated successfully and installation is successful, great. Congratulations, guys. We have Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. Yes, but it's still in WSL1. We have to convert it to WSL2. Okay, so let's get out of here. You can read this message as much as you want, but let's get out of here to convert it. To convert it, we, we need to fire up PowerShell. So exit out PowerShell. That looks good. We open it up. First, we type in WSL-1. <laughs> WSL-L and it gives us Windows subsystem for Linux distribution. Uh, whatever you have installed, as you can see, I have Ubuntu 20.04, which is the default installation. And to convert it to uh, WSL2, this is the command. So we say WSL space dash dash set dash version space the name of your distribution and then two. So if this is the conversion process, it will take some time. It took a lot of time on my machine. This is sped up. And uh, uh, so, so what we are doing is converting the distribution from Linux to uh, the installation from using the Windows system from Linux 1 to Windows. It's done. Conversion complete. Yeah, that's great. All done, guys. So if I and if you like WSL2 so much, you can use set default version 2. So all your further installation from the Windows Store, whatever you install, either Ubuntu or Fedora or Mint or Debian or OpenSUSE, all will run on WSL2. So for, even from PowerShell, I hit WSL and now we are in a Linux environment. But we are accessing our Windows file. You see, MNTC users, Hikmate Ostar. Yeah, 
So as I said, we can even access a Windows installation from our Ubuntu. So if I exit, we log out from Ubuntu. And if I hit, hit exit, we are done. So the two basic commands that I need to show you, sudo apt-get update as soon as you start up, you should do this and sudo apt-get upgrade. So sudo apt-get update will update all the places from where it will download the Ubuntu update and sudo apt-get upgrade will actual, up, actually update your uh, Ubuntu installation. So that's it guys. Hopefully you liked what you saw and if you like what you saw, please subscribe, please share, please share with your friends, please hit that like button and I'm going to provide a video of the experience of download of installing a graphic, a graphical application in Windows subsystem for Linux 2. So if you want to see that video, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I make that video which is going to come shortly by the way. <laughs> uh, so uh, thank you guys so much for your time. Take care.